Hey guys, Ken here from Think Trade Profit. In this video, I want to share with you Fidelity Active Trader Pro's feature Trade Armor. I'm going to do a complete review and a tutorial. Um, and at the end of this video, I'm going to share some conditional orders that I found that are really powerful. I guarantee you guys don't know these are out there um, and they work really well in our current markets. So stay tuned for that too. So let's jump right in to Trade Armor. So if you don't know, from the main uh, application window, Trade Armor is under Trading Orders. You can go to Trade Armor and pop that up, and that's the main window. I'm going to take a look at Cheesecake Factory. So this is the initial um, kind of perspective. This window is resizable, but it only goes so small. Um, so you can make the chart bigger and that kind of thing. You do need a little bit of space for this on this side, but there's a couple options down here. You can look at Positions. So this will show you current positions. If you have stuff in your account, it'll, if you have a portfolio or that kind of thing, um, it'll show you what you have. And it'll show you news and research. And there's details, dividends, earnings, that kind of things. And there's also a peek at um, options. So for this video, we're going to pretty much stay with the stock trading part and look at positions. News and research you can do on your own. A um, couple things to note, you can trade right off the bid of the ask. So if you click the ask, it thinks you want to buy and it'll pre-fill a little ticket. It'll have the slider over here and you can adjust the limit price. You can use these to adjust it uh, even in smaller increments. And if you hit the bid, it thinks you want to sell. And likewise, you can adjust prices here. Um, some things to note, there's a few choices up here as far as this chart goes. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of settings, it doesn't have a lot of configuration. So unless you're maybe a swing trader or a longer term um, kind of investor, you probably want some indicators and that kind of thing on your charts. But if not, these are the choices up here. You've got uh, 10 day support and resistance and that kind of thing. And this goes down to intraday in a one minute. Um, unfortunately, you're stuck with this bar chart. So. It's, uh, it's a little bit different than candles and you're also stuck with the color settings. Uh, I don't like this part because I'm red green color blind so these are red and green this is a nightmare to me. But anyways, these are your chart settings. But really the power of uh, Trade Armor is it allows you to put in conditional orders, bracket orders, stop losses, profit targets really easy. A little bit easier than say the general trade ticket. The other thing you can do is you can set up alerts right from here too. So you can set for this stock, if price rises above $18, set an alert and delivery options and all that. I'll let you guys look into that, but that's in your account um, online and you can tweak it. You can be text, you can be emailed, you can have it alert you in Active Trader Pro. So it's kind of cool, but the Trade Armor's power is really here in these different order types and the different conditional orders that you can set up. So there's a lot of choices in this trade ticket, the Trade Armor trade ticket. And just so you know, the settings for this the things that you can set up and pre-configure are in settings and trade and then go to stock defaults. I'm going to change this to one for this demo. So I put the default quantity of one and then down here at the bottom, this section, trade armor bracket settings defaults. I'm going to change this to like a dollar and a dollar. So you'll see how this comes into play and I've got it a dollar above the current price and a dollar below the current price. You can also use percents. But let's leave that for now. So now we just got one share is our default size. So if we, we reopen this ticket, now it's gonna put in one share. So I'll put on a couple positions. We'll talk about these order types and we'll talk about how these kind of play into what kind of trader or investor you are. So actions is the different kind of conditional orders or regular order types. So you're all probably familiar with buy and sell. Those are pretty straightforward. Buy to cover and sell short. That's pretty straightforward too. Uh, just so you know, you can put limits, market, stop, stop limit, that kind of thing. If we do a bracket, this is where it gets interesting. Now you can set a stop loss and a profit target. Um, and as you'll see on Cake here, Cake's trading around 24.79. So when I open this up for a share of Cake, it's got my upper stop. My This is for a buy to cover, so this would assume I'm short. So I would put this in, it would stop me out at up a dollar above because that was our settings before on the other screen. And if it dropped down a dollar, it would uh, get me out there for a profit. And you can obviously change the time and force and that kind of thing. Custom is kind of cool too. Um, you can set this up just for a couple days. So it doesn't have to be day or good till cancel. It could be till the end of the week or, or what have you. Something else I want to show you, um, there are different options and you can use Trade Armor pre-market 
and after hours. So I have some screenshots. We're actually in the main market hours right now. It's about 2 p.m. Let me show you some screenshots of the options available there. All right, this is a screen capture I took this morning, pre-market. And so there's some different options here in Trade Armor for pre-market. And let's go over these real quick. A day order, that's pretty self-explanatory. Good till cancel, that's the same one that's available. That's out there uh, for a while. Then there's custom, we talked about that. You can set a date and a time. But there is fill or kill, immediate or cancel, and on the open. So if you're new to um, some of these more complex order types, or if you're coming from Robinhood, they may not have had these available to you. I'll run through these real quick. If you're a veteran, you probably know what these are uh, about. But fill or kill. This means that you send this order out and either it is available and the entire order gets filled or they cancel it. So you want it right now. You want the entire order or cancel. Immediate or cancel is very similar. The difference here is they could give you some partial fill of your order. If you wanted a thousand shares at 24 and you send this out and there's only 500 available it'll give you the partial it'll give you the 500 shares available and then it'll cancel the balance and then on the open uh, as well is on the open take the action based on what you set up in here so pretty powerful i think it's pretty cool again the the power of trade armor is it gets you away from the computer you don't have to sit and monitor your trades if you um, are a good uh, technical analyst and you know that you like certain prices and you're willing to risk so much and sell at a different profit target you can set it and forget it uh, you don't have to sit at your computer you could do all your work pre-market or early in the morning before you go to work and you said hey if amd hits this price today i'm willing to buy it and take a dollar risk and I'll sell it two dollars higher. This would do everything. You could set up the order and say on the open go. It's really good for those kind of traders who obviously maybe have a job, or uh, you're in a different time zone where it's really inconvenient. Um, you can set yourself up and plan ahead for the action. All right, so we'll jump back to the current market and let's put on a couple small positions. And um, I'll show you how this works, and I'll show you another feature that you can look out for in your positions window. So um, let's do a buy triggers back bracket. Um, this is probably the most complex order in here. So this is one order triggers the other two orders. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy a share of, we're on cake right now, Cheesecake Factory. I'm gonna buy a share of cake at the market. I'm gonna leave this bracket around it. Um, it's probably not gonna go up a dollar or, or uh, down a dollar while we're watching it. But I wanna show you what happens in the positions window because there's something you can add there to track your positions. The one thing I don't like about Trade Armor, and I think this is a design issue, um, is this order type, this one in particular, it takes up more than the entire uh, screen. It's bigger than all the others. It makes the screen expand and contract. The other ones don't do that. So I wish they had a design person. These are all pretty consistent. But depending on your layout or where you put this, this irks me. If you choose a buy triggers bracket, the window jumps down and it needs more space. So you have to set this somewhere awkward and, and leave some blank space. I don't like that from a design standpoint. Okay, but anyways, uh, let's do this. So we're gonna buy a share of cake and we're gonna leave that bracket around it. So let's do that. I'll move this out of the way. You can see that uh, in here. So, um, we got a share of the market at 24.85. Here's the limit order to um, for the profit target at 25.85, and here's the stop loss at 23.86. Um, and then you could just let this ride. So with that, one thing to notice. Let me move this out of the way. If you go to your here's my position. There's one quantity of of cake at that price. One of the columns in here is trade armor. So if you, this is really ideal for somebody who has a lot of positions in their account. Maybe you're an investor, you have a large portfolio and that kind of thing. You can keep an eye on a lot of different, um, a lot of different positions. Bear with me, I, uh, oh, it's already on here, I'm sorry. So I have trade armor selected in the columns. I just didn't have this wide enough. So let's take a look over here. Here it is. So this is what I wanted to show you. This column in Trade Armor, if you had a whole slew of positions here, it'll tell you uh, which ones you have orders open on. So this shows that I have that bracket order out there. 
um, for that price target, uh, price target and stop loss. So it's kind of cool. So if you if you know if you have a large portfolio and you're trying to manage it, you can take a peek. You can cancel and replace these orders right from here too. So it's really cool um, to to manage it that way as well. All right, so let's go back in here. Likewise, you can manage the orders from from the orders window. This is how I do it when I use Directed Trade. But cancel and replace, create duplicate, all that stuff. And right now we're about flat. All right, so who do I think this is best for? I think it's good for those who understand all the different order types, don't want to sit and watch the screen, or can't sit and watch uh, price all day long. Um, you've got that set it and forget it, and you can visually manipulate things uh, up here. So it's kind of cool. It'll make all the changes here. You can move the, the profit target or the stop loss and that kind of thing and play around with them. So if you like that kind of thing and you don't like the general trade window or director trade window and you're not in a crazy hurry, this is pretty nice. It's pretty cool. Um, and then you just hit replace. So visually, I think it's really appealing. Um, I think it's a little slow for super fast scalping. That's why I don't use it. Um, I'm in and out of a lot of trades, and there's a lot of things to to fill out in some of these trade tickets. If you open um, a new ticket, the only thing that gets filled in automatically is obviously you're on a particular symbol, but you still have to select the action, and you may have to make some changes here. Um, the limits in here because my default trade ticket is set to a limit order. Um, and the brackets were in those other settings too, but there's still you still have to select an action here and that kind of thing So it's a little bit slow for like really fast markets in my opinion uh, One thing to remember as you're setting up some of these order types And this is really again for people who come from Robinhood or maybe you're newer to the markets learn the different order types um, trailing stop uh, dollar percentage very cool trailing stop limit uh, in, in the same kind of configuration. But the biggest misunderstanding we see, or I've seen in the forums and that kind of thing, people new to the markets, is stop versus stop limit. Use a stop loss, you should, protect your money, protect your profits like I always say. But uh, just a refresher for everybody, stop limit says, hey, stop me out when the price trades at this price, but stop me out at that price. That's the dangerous one. Don't use stop limit if you really want to get out of something and you're not going to monitor your position. Use stop. This is called a stop market. This means when it gets to a certain price, it gets you out at the market no matter what. Um, you guys have heard me talk about the execution quality of fidelity and that kind of thing. Use stop market. You're not going to get slipped that much if you do the market was fast anyways. But if you use stop limit on an open order, multiple things can happen. The market can move really, really fast. And it can trade through your limit such that it hits that price, but there was nothing available to fill your order and you don't get stopped out. So you could be short something, you use a stop limit, it keeps ripping higher, and they don't fill you because you have a limit on it. You say, if it gets to 50, get me out, but it moves so fast through 50, there was nothing to get you there. And that's what it waits for. And that's the dangerous one. So you stop market to protect yourself, don't use stop limit. All right, so let's exit this cake position. All right, so if we want to exit uh, our one share of cake, we can do it a couple different ways, but I'm gonna do it from Shade Armor. So here the chart only goes so far up, the range on this right now, and see this This says we have one order up there, so we can go, that's the uh, profit target. So we're gonna replace that one, we're just making a market order. So we're gonna go replace, it brings up the ticket up here, and we'll change this to, Oh, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll change the exit, the upper exit price to something lower. That's what we're going to do. So we'll do 83, which is very close to the current market, and see if we get filled. So 83, it still has a stop loss in there for you, just in case. You never know what happens. So that gives us a trade confirmation. If we look at the order window over here, so there's our, our limit order. It hasn't executed yet, and the market actually moved below us. We'll give it a second. But that'll get us out of the market if it trades back up at 83. And then you should see the open position go way up here too. Okay, we'll let that ride. I'm not gonna make you guys wait around for that. So with that, I promised I would show you something else. Um, I discovered some conditional orders that I guarantee you do not know are in Active Trader Pro. I was doing some research, I stumbled across these, and I'm almost certain I've never seen these before, but they've probably been there the whole time. So I was pretty excited, and I wanna tack it on to this video.
All right, so if you go into trade in orders and you go to conditional trade, so this is the hard way to put in some of the orders that I just showed you in Trade Armor. Um, there is that same one we saw over there. One triggers, one cancels the other. And you could do that manually here, but you have to fill out everything. So that's why Trade Armor is far superior uh, than trying to do all this, especially on the fly, right? But there's something interesting here. If you go to Contingent, this is very cool. So you can do stock or ETF and you can do things like this. You could, this is just a condition and you could set up something like if the last trade or the bid or the ask or the volume or the change or is it a 52 week high for Micron, then do something else and you could, it could be a different stock. So you can do parish trading and stuff like that. Some people hedge their positions. They'll be short one stock and long the other, but they're in the same sector and that kind of thing. There's some really powerful combinations you can do here with this. This is a condition and these are the choices and there's quite a few different triggers. Last bid, ask, volume, 52 week high, uh, up or down a certain percentage for the day. It can be a day or good to cancel or a custom order again. You could just have this for two days or three days or whatever. Very cool. One more thing. There's also indices in here. So they have the major indexes and sectors in here. So the SOX is in here, the semiconductor index is in here, um, the SPX, the S&P 500 index. These selections might be really powerful for the markets we're in right now. So you have a lot of people uh, on CNBC um, and technical analysts predicting certain things happen at, oh, if the S&P gets to 3,300, we'll do this. Or if the NASDAQ you know, breaks down from so-and-so, um, then it's no coming back and that kind of thing. You can set up things for your stocks or your portfolio based on the indices or the sectors. So here, this is where this gets really powerful. For example, you could change it to index, change it to the S&P 500 index, and the trick could be something like this. If it traded at a certain level, or if the volume, or if it's a 52 week high or low or whatever, let's say 52 week low, less than or equal to the 52 week low, then go buy me some stock, whatever, whatever you like. This would be really powerful when we had um, over the past two months or so where the Nasdaq just didn't have back-to-back -back, um, losing days. It would drop 1% or 2% and then it would rebound the next day. Um, you could use this to say, hey, set me up for the NDX. Every time it dips 1%, go buy me 10 shares of Tesla or what have you. So really powerful. I think it's really cool. I didn't know this was here. I didn't know they had it set up for all these indices. So take a look at this. There's so much here. It's really cool. Um, here's the semiconductor index. So I can say if it's greater than some level, go buy Intel or AMD or whatever. Very, very cool feature, contingent orders. Um, so maybe that'll work for you. Add that to your playbook, um, especially when you're looking for major levels of the market. Maybe there's something you want to do. You want to buy dips or you want to try to capture the top. You could use this and the major indices to trigger your stock trades. So I think it's big. It's a lot of fun. But with that, that's all I have. Trade armor and uh, conditional contingent orders. A lot of flexibility in there if you like it. Um, I hope this gives you something to think about. Um, and as always, if I helped you out and if you'd like to see more videos like these, please subscribe. Um, throw your comments below. Maybe you knew this stuff already, or maybe you use Trade Armor already, and I'm an amateur. Uh, I don't use it that much. It doesn't really work for me. It's a little bit too much setup compared to my directed trade custom keys. I like those a little bit more for the kind of trading that I do. Uh, as always, guys, crazy markets. You know, play good defense, protect your profits, and I will see you next time. Take care.